Hey everybody, Radamon here. Thanks for tuning in to Frost and Fire. A little reminder of those rules and the fact that this is a community challenge. Picking up where we left off, right at the very end of last episode, we got attacked by some manhunting gorillas, and just by unbelievable chance, uh, the vast majority of them did not have scaria rot meaning that we will be able to butcher them for additional sources of food, which is great. Another thing that I would like to do is to start having uh, Gabe here get as much of the gold out from this node as possible. Uh, right now, I have about 76 gold, and given that I have 76 gold, it is going to be a sizable bottleneck um, two bionics and the like. Uh, Gabe, for instance, is missing two toes. And Raptor is missing two toes. Uh, so both of whom should be getting bionic legs soon. I'll queue that up. In queuing that up, that also means that JD, who was previously helping on the kill box, is going to be wrapped up doing some crafting. The reason I need gold, as should be evidenced to all of you, is that uh, each advanced component takes three gold, so a bionic leg is still uh, going to require some gold. And then on top of all of that, there's a possibility that I'll have um, I'll have a royal tribute caravan coming to my base when it is temperate. And if they do come, if I do end up having royal tribute show up, uh, I'll be able to donate some of that gold for royal favor. So first things first, let's get all of these gorillos butchered up so we don't waste any of them. I wouldn't want that. That would be that would be terrible. And then I'll probably start cooking up some more fine meals as a result as well. Uh, we also have the gorilla that we wanted to try to tame uh, on its feet, so I'm going to start that too. As far as schedules go, uh, Redfoot should be able to start helping to haul around. I think what I'm going to do is turn off this ground penetrating scanner and uh, have Redfoot start helping out some other way uh, by probably hauling or maybe doing some cursory research, something like that. Now, all the gorillas that I've tried to tame in the past, we have had to fight because they have tried to kill me. I'm really hoping that this time is different and we don't have to just put down yet another gorilla. One thing I'm going to have uh, Hippie do is to haul the dead animals that I've got here. Oh, why are you hauling it there? No, I don't want you doing that. Uh, to haul the dead animals away... Uh, so that their corpse bile is uh, not an issue. Because, of course, if we don't haul these guys away, um, you know, the dead creatures, uh, there will be some corpse bile, and that just means more cleanup. And I do believe that everything down in this tunnel here um, does not have, uh, you know, uh, we don't clean down here. No, we don't. Okay, let's cancel that zone. So we also, as a result of all those gorilla butcherings, uh, we will have a considerable amount of gorilla leather. Um, I am going to continue the current duster that I am I have queued, but for future uh, clothing projects, I am going to make it out of gorilla leather and not cloth. Gorilla leather is going to be a lot better than cloth. And it looks like our first of our slugs is getting made. So if we take a look at this power grid, uh, one of the things I want to do is to have dead power uh, easily sourced and readily available um, so that the turrets can easily be turned off. So that's something we need to do. So I'm not entirely sure if this turret is going to be on or not. No, it is off. So if you look at the turret, the inner ring is a dead zone where it won't be able to fire. Oh, actually, with that in mind, I really do want to push these out a little further. The inner ring is a dead zone. 
uh, minimum range dead zone. Um, and the turrets, these uranium slow turrets are inaccurate uh, when targets are very close. So one of the things that I want to do, uh, once I have the time, and this is what more cloth, uh, one of the things I wanted to do is to make sure that um, uh, that I have all small turrets out here to attract enemies so that there is a target to fire at. Uh, that way, enemies coming into my kill box uh, don't go within the minimum range of that uranium turret. Or any turret, for that matter. So this here is a live power line, and then I'm going to have a dead power line just behind it. I'm not going to offer any cover, though. Enemies that are out here uh, should be fully exposed. JD is set up to do construction uh, more than any other task. And then uh, another thing I'm going to start to do now that it is getting warmer is pretty soon I will be switching over from heaters to coolers. I'm not going to have JD do any of the uh, bionic leg crafting until it gets too warm to comfortably do the work. Uh, and, and with that said, I, I do have a bit of time before that uh, temperature threshold is met. Especially given uh, we are about to go from winter clothing to summer clothing. So Phoenix and Bash getting the summer brawler. And then everybody else getting the summer shooters. Uh, Redfoot I cannot change, but she's sort of already dressed for summer. And then uh, Raptor does not have climate-specific clothing. He's in Royal all the time. But as you can see, Gabe was the first one to swap out. He's a quick sleeper, so no surprise there that he's up and at him very early. Uh, and because he is our miner, he also has... Um, he got access to some of the nicest uh, clothing earliest, uh, which, and then Bash is taking some too. That's great. And really, honestly, the real advantage of this is that uh, the guys that work outside the most and the longest are also protected from the heat. But as you can see, even the minimum temperature of this clothing, 38 Fahrenheit or 3 Celsius, uh, is already hotter than that outside. So our guys are not going to uh, freeze either. That's not likely to happen. I think, okay, yes, all of, I'm going to switch this zone around, all of my meat can fit, I just need to move things around a bit, that's much better. We have been failing the tame continuously, uh, that does mean that I am working on my animal skill, in fact, Bash might have gone from 13 to 14, I think that is the case. Redfoot is... Oh boy, I'm a little worried about her not being as happy as she needs to be. Um, at this point in the game, it's important for her to have her recreation filled. If you look at the quest, if we keep her happy, I gain some additional um, mood. And that's going to be really, really important if I uh, want to befriend them more. So if I'm done t for now using the ground penetrating radar, which is in fact the case, I'm going to roof it off. Another thing I might want to do, uh, now that it is somewhat temperate, uh, this was, oh boy, I apologize. This was a suggestion of someone on YouTube. Um, I'll try to look it up while I play. How crazy is that? Um, it was a suggestion of someone on YouTube that uh, maybe I should move the smelter down there. Who was it? A uh, fake account. Fake account suggested that I move the smelter down here to get rid of all this slag. And that's a very, very fine idea. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's just repurpose this light over here. And I'm going to have my guys crank out a whole bunch of uh, slag smelting. I'm also going to instruct Gabe to do a little bit more steel. Um, mining because we are running out of it 
And Bash, when you're up here, we're going to go get the components. I have a lot of components, but it never hurts to have some more. And as you can see, Hippie is hauling. A lot of our guys are hauling. So here is the auto cannon turret. As you can see, auto cannon turrets uh, and slug turrets. Uh, auto cannon turrets have a slightly shorter minimum range. Um, but they also have shorter long range. Auto cannon turrets are different than mini tur uh, slug turrets. Auto cannon turrets use steel for barrel durability, so they reload with steel, whereas slug turrets reload with slugs. Uh, they have a minimum range of 9 and 12 apiece. And then, as you can see, the maximum range here uh, would be 46, which is the same as a sniper rifle. And the maximum range of an auto cannon turret is um, 33, which is comparable... Here, this should read 46, or 45, I think it's 45.9. Um, 33 is comparable to maybe a recurve bow or an assault rifle, something like that. Let's see about the charge lance. The charge lance is about 30, so it's slightly longer than a charge lance. Um, but yeah, that's going to be really important to take note. Um, that this is, these turrets do not operate uh, when enemies are... At them, they only really work uh, at a minimum range, and and that's going to be really really important to to remember. All right, hippie, I am going to have hippie grind out a whole lot of slag because well, I actually don't have a good reason, but um, I'll make up a reason because we gave her a new lease on life. We bought her a lung. Uh, we patched her up, we gave her a new leg, so she'll earn it by cranking through the slag. And uh, Gabe is out here doing the same. It is now, uh, in the base here, it is now warmer than ambient. Um, or warmer than the temperature that I'd like to set everything at. I guess I've been having these, um all these freezers on full time, but uh, what, what that means is I'm going to start turning on uh, the air conditioners. I don't want to turn them all on uh, at this moment because it's not hot enough to warrant every air conditioner turned on. Keeping in mind that anything that is flicked on can also have a chance to malfunction and require uh, power. And then also because we're switching over from heat uh, to AC, uh, turning on the light bulbs in the bedrooms so that uh, there's a light source for the daily leaves to grow. So this is the uh, changing of the seasons. As you can see, it went from the sort of reddish hue of the heaters uh, to the more white tinted lights. And we got the gorilla. Wow. Awesome. I'm going to train this gorilla to haul. It can serve the same purpose as uh, the crabs do, but for the opposite season. Um, so it will be able to haul and move around in the winter. Let's take a look at its temperature. As you can see, it is comfortable. Actually, its maximum is pretty good, but its, its minimum isn't peak winter. It's more temperate. Gorillas are more temperate than um, crabs. Crabs are obviously more geared towards the extreme heats of the summer. Um, but one of the advantages is gorillas grow wool. And the wool that they grow uh, can be used to make very insulating clothing. So that's uh, one of the biggest reasons to have gorillas. To employ them in our defenses. All right, Hippie, I am going to have you take a break. Uh, eat that in our dining room, please. And unfortunately for me, we have a heat wave. So if I have a heat wave coming, uh, let me flick on some additional coolers. It's going to get uh, rather hot, rather fast. Another thing is that the braziers here have run out of fuel. So if we see... Raptor is going to be saddled with a undignified throne room minus eight mood lit as a result of me not wanting to keep those lit. Uh, I do have a lot of wood, but 
it makes more sense to light the braziers on in the in the winter when they provide heat than in the summer when I still have to AC cool them. And gave you a sport name, minor break risk. I think you'll be all right though. Okay, just making sure that we don't have any severe heat issues. I don't think we will. Um, because it is very, it's not even proper summer yet. So this heat wave came at a time when the heat isn't too bad. Now, another thing I need to do is to, uh, build the power cables. So I'm going to temporarily suspend the auto cannon turrets. I'm going to forbid them so that I focus on the power cables because without these power cables constructed, uh, we're... Oh, should that be roofed off? I don't think so. Without the power cables, it won't really matter if we have defenses or not. They're not going to be really able to do very much. So let's get rid of that uh, those roofs. All right, Hippie, you are going to be smelting. Great. I think at this point, I can move the smelter over to the other side. And smelt closer to where I want it. So this is one of the mech clusters that is targeting Redfoot. It makes centipedes in both assemblers. Um, if I take a look at my current schedule, uh, I am going to have to make a new zone. I deleted the last avoid zone. So this is going to be a void. Um, one of the tricky things is that this cluster is right next to my trade beacon. So I also don't, I should not be going anywhere near the trade beacon either. Uh, if we analyze it a little bit closer, let's do that. Uh, we have got an auto mortar. Ooh, this changes the equation pretty considerably. Uh, so we have a low mech shield, which stops incoming uh, bullets and an auto mortar, which I'm going to need to deal with immediately. I didn't notice the auto mortar at first. So, uh, cauterize. I want you back in the crab zone. Every single person is going to get ready to crush this immediately. Now, if you take a look, uh, there is some um, uh, mini slugger turrets, and I am going to paint a very, very crude plan line here of the maximum range of the mini slugger turrets so that none of my guys... Uh, can be caught unaware um, and get shot. Now, the Inferno turret back here is behind a wall, so it's not going to have a line of sight on me. And then, actually, if I if I take a, a sort of northwest tact here, this mini slugger turret won't have a active line of sight either. It has two scythers. It has a pikeman. Uh, the pikeman and scythers should be relatively easy to deal with. That's not a lot of enemies. Uh, the thing is, the other zone I want to mark here... It has a mech drop beacon, so it's going to be giving me a random mech. The other zone that I want to mark out, demark, is roughly the area of uh, low mech shield. So this new plan zone here is sort of the radius of the low mech shield. So shooting anything beyond this point is pointless. So the idea here is to piss off the mechs, um, drag them beyond the shield northbound, um, and then kill them, while and then quickly disperse or dispatch of the uh, auto mortar. That's the current plan. And Redfoot gets to entirely and completely sit this one out. She's a guest, and uh, I don't think that she's going to be particularly useful in this fight anyway, so. Now, there is the possibility, of course, of calling in um, a trooper squad, uh, but I'd rather save that for an emergency and I don't consider this engagement to be an emergency. I don't think this will be too difficult. I think it is pretty straightforward. I just want all my ducks in a row, all my shooters ready to go. And they are. Okay, so first order of business is to wake up uh, the enemies. I can also use smoke pop. Um, 
Okay. Activated the proximity. Here comes the mech drop beacons. And I'm actually going to move back a little bit. I'll move here. Go around the corner. Alright, so the mech drops were uh, just more easy to brawl enemies of not much consequence. Unfortunately, they just hit Phoenix's shield, so I'm going to have Phoenix back out of this for a bit. One down. Uh, the rest of these mechs are going to be coming around. Some of them actually might go into the kill box. Yeah, that's what it looks like. All right. Let's go to round here. They are not taking the bait towards me. They're taking the bait towards here. I can turn on the slug turrets and the auto cannon turrets, uh, but I would like to conserve as much uh, power as I can. Then the other thing is, as soon as Phoenix's shield regenerates, I'm going to have him beeline for the auto mortar because I do not want the auto mortar um, shooting me at all. Right? I, I want to take that out of the fight. All right, so these mechs seem to be a mite bit confused about where they're going. Uh, I think because of where Phoenix is standing, so I'm going to have him back off. Or actually, you know what? I think what happened was they reset uh, because I hadn't fought them recently and unfortunately that was not good enough to uh, initiate combat all right let's get my shooters down and bash going the same place now I do have some time that this auto mortar doesn't initiate uh, very quickly all right everybody scatter scatter there we are and let's put ourselves right here where the mechanoids have a clear path to get to me. I'm going to have JD repair that door. And it looks like Phoenix is ready to go out again with a full shield. I'm going to have him uh, focus the auto mortar because I think the auto mortar is the most annoying of all the, uh, of all the enemies. Now, I want to close the distance with Bash. So that the um, these mechs do not have a chance to hit me hard or whatever. All right, uh, let's actually let's go after the mini turrets. All right, so there goes one mech, and we will set up for the rest of the mech fights, hugging the wall. Oh yeah, there's the inferno turret. That's another thing to consider. Uh, actually, let's disable the inferno turret first because that could be really annoying. The centipedes don't uh, start assembling for a bit. Whoa, I should have been paying attention over here. All right, everybody fire on him. Hit a smoke pop. I, let's see. Oh, unfortunately, the smoke pop belt uh, bloomed out a little bit too far and is providing cover. Uh, for that Scyther, which is not what I had intended. Poor Bash. But, uh, unfortunately, Raptor doesn't have skip or anything else that could be useful in this instance. I could, uh, I could call back up, but I think I'll be alright. Alright, sounds like Phoenix made work of that, uh, Inferno. Gabe just got torsoed by the pikemen. Now, these pikemen out here still have smoke cover, do they? Oh, there we go. Now the smoke's gone. All right, Bash, you hang in there. Okay, let's get the rest of the micro turrets. And there's only one pikeman left. That is a full clear. Bash is mostly just bruised. Actually, entirely bruised. Gabe's the only one that actually has a wound. I'm going to have all of my guys here um, haul the mechanoids back to the base when they're done with their current meals. 
And Phoenix is going to be used to just clean up the remainder of the mech cluster. I think, actually, the mini slugger turret over there dealt the final blow to this. I don't think it was even my swings. Uh, my shield just got depleted, but it's of little consequence because there's nothing even left to shoot at me. This is a fully defeated mech cluster. It just doesn't know it yet. Alright, I hear it hissing. Let's back up. And unfortunately, the low shield um, got destroyed. Let's remove all evidence. All right, Bash and Gabe. Uh, Gabe, I'm going to give you herbal meds and herbal meds. I want them to heal up quick. Um, I'm not going to use my best meds because I don't need to. <laughs> uh, but I am going to use herbal meds just so they heal up faster. Um, because I don't know when the next cluster's coming, and I want to be prepared. Ta-da! It's destroyed. Alright, let's go ahead and fight this fire so that my components that I earned from here doesn't get destroyed. Uh, I don't think I'm going to keep a gloom light. They're ugly. They're hideous, actually, and uh, I don't really need it. Uh, as far as schedules go, uh, I don't really need to restrict anyone on the void zone, because I went straight for the fight. Instead, I'm going to set bed rest up to maximum priority for everybody so that they hop into bed and get recovered. All but one of the mechs have already been hauled back to the base. Yep. And I didn't need to use a single piece of steel for that defense. All right, Ms. Hippie. Let's get you smelting. Uh, Bash. Hop in bed. Gabe is going to drink a beer first, I guess. He's going to bleed everywhere inconveniently. Oh boy, aren't you? No, quit using the heart. What is your issue? Uh, bed rest, man. Bed rest. All right, he's trying to reload his smoke pop belt. I'm going to have him drop it because I'm getting a little frustrated with his lackadaisical uh, approach to not bleeding everywhere and making a big old mess. I guess I could have forced him into a bed, but um, I'll do it this way. All right, so Raptor's administering, administering uh, medical. And uh, I think we're good now. We have a little bit of mech shredding to do. That should be, yep, it is the only current um, current task that we've got. In fact, I can get rid of some of these other uh, bills. I don't really need them. Okay, Redfoot is hauling steel. Hippie is grinding out the slag. And my colonists are great. Uh, taking a look at Cauterize, you are able to be unrestricted hauling now, again. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is, let's separate out, um, let's call this Pemmican. So this will be the overflow Pemmican storage. I'm going to clear all and just put Pemmican. And then this will be consumables. This will be, um, no drugs for pets. That is what I'm going to call it. Uh, this will be important. What is this? Yeah, that was important too. So manufactured drugs of all types go here when they do not fit here. So then if I update the unrestricted animal hauling, I'm going to allow um, Cauterize to haul that uh, pemmican there so that we can restock the shelf. Um, but the the unrestricted, the, you know, there is not going to be a way for him to get to this stockpile. In fact, I'll even put an air gap around it. So let's immediately haul this beer um, out of the way. And I'm going to take a moment. Oh man, Gabe bled everywhere. It's one of the reasons why sometimes I'll do triage in the field, even though the, um, the 10 quality is a lot lower is so that you don't end up with a scenario where uh, your base is full of blood that you have to clean up. 
Because blood is ugly, makes people sad. Alright, Raptor will deal with it. He's the doctor. So now any of the drug overflow that we have goes there. Out of the way. Oh, I guess he didn't really finish. Well, hippie, that was a very fine job you did. I'm going to have you put the smelter back now that you're done. That entire cave is now completely clean of slag. Looks much, much better. And then if we take a quick look, uh, this mini turret covers this entire tunnel perfectly. There is no edge of this tunnel where a sapper can come in and not be shot by this mini turret. And that is how to protect your perimeter uh, from sappers. It takes, taking a look, it looks like, oh, uh, I know what's going on. Uh, my chimneys were not removed of their roofing. That's why it was overheating. Yep, well, that is very fixable. I was wondering why there was a, a heat climb yeah, we'll we'll get that fixed because it's it's really not that hot out. So the fact that it's like 86 in my base is an indicator that I have not been paying enough attention to those chimneys. It's hasn't been ingrained in my mind that I need to fix that. Now, unfortunately, this was the season I really wanted Gabe to do external um, mining, and uh, he is a little out of the picture as a result of you know being stabbed. But hopefully, oh, you know what? Unrestricted animal hauling probably should not include this maze because Cauterize does not need to weather the maze. There's really no point in that. Okay, JD is fixing the, uh, the chimney issue. And with that, you should see the temperature in our bedrooms drop significantly now that we're not fighting our own heat produced. A builder with enemies. Emperor Tengu, High Stellarch of the United Cities, is requesting a favor. His friend, a 51-year-old builder named Dokus, uh, recently angered a machine persona somehow. Tengu is asking us to guard Dokus for 15 days. Uh, two mech clusters will drop. It is unlike Redfoot, Dokus will not do any work. Uh, I will get significant honor for it. Ten champions are placed under my control but may die without any consequence. Now, last time I had champions under my control that could die without consequence, I chose to keep them very safe. Uh, this time, I'm going to actually reject this mission. I don't have the ability to feed 10 champions, and in my own interpretation of my rules, which is here, just a little reminder, I must remain neutral or allied with all factions. My interpretation is that I must treat my allies ethically, it's part, it, it does make the game obviously more challenging because, of course, I could accept this mission, immediately have these 10 champions walk into my, like, heat box here, which would cook them, have them pass out, loot all their stuff. Um, but then, am I really an ally or am I a duplicitous bastard, right? So, I know that's how most people would play RimWorld, or at least some of you, but I won't. I actually do want to treat my allies well. Uh, for better or for worse, as m as expensive as that might be, uh, that is the the path and route I'll choose. So JD is setting up the dead power uh, so that I can move my turrets up here. So what I'm going to be doing is moving the turrets. I think that right there will work. I have to double check the distance. Uh, I want them to be able to connect to the power and the dead power alike. So we'll see if this works. So that's powered on and that's powered up. That's perfect. And then the idea here is to space them out uh, so that they can't possibly blow up upon one another. So I might have to adjust their positioning. 
Um, yes. Actually, it looks like I might... Let's try this again. I'll go from the middle. I didn't, uh, I didn't sort of blueprint or plan this out ahead of time, so it's going to have a little bit of growing pains. Oh, we have an exotic goods trader. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the roof here. I've already prioritized this beacon here as the uh, prior priority beacon. And I'm also going to move the uh, fire foam popper. I'm going to move the fire foam popper into the uh, royal room. I'll just put it in the corner here. Well, it's got to be... In a spot, uh, maybe right behind the, the throne. I'm moving that so that if there's a fire in here, because of all the fine carpets, uh, we can very, very, very quickly uh, suppress all the fire. Okay, so trade. Exotic goods. Uh, the baby crabs going out the door. We're getting rid of them. Um, hmm. I don't need Beckon. I don't need any of those skill trainers, I don't think. Um, I don't have the money for flat screen TVs or anything like that. So it will just be a simple sale. Oh, guest. Redfoot, could you please? Could you pretty, pretty please? Um, I'll let you eat fine meals. How's that sound? Red foot, eat uh, fine and simple meals. Or actually just eat fine meals. Bash has tattered apparel. Uh, his gorilla leather pants. Okay. Well, I do believe that uh, JD will fix that soon. I'm going to have JD shred some uh, some of these mechanoids. I am going to have some leftover turrets uh, after moving all these, which is fine. Gabe is fully healed, so he's back to farming for us. We've had some crops ready to be harvested for some time now. Bash is almost back in it. It's getting very close. Our pet gorilla is fully healed and is currently training to guard. Uh, once Hall is completed with the pet gorilla, I, I plan on uh, training him to attack and, well, everything. Rescue at all of the tasks. Oh, there's one other thing I might want to trade before the exotic goods go bye-bye. Uh, to see if they have stones. Stone blocks, because they're so rare on this planet. They don't. They have statues I could buy and break down, but that's uh, that's a bit prohibitive. It's not something I'm, I'm intending on doing. Paid pike, uh, psychic suppression. No, I don't really want to be psychically suppressed. Either. And the rewards are garbage for, for a psychic suppression. If you're not sure what a psychic suppression is... Um, Basically, your brain is going to be like at half consciousness, depending on the gender of the psychic suppress, for the entire duration of the suppression. And uh, it makes you very, very sluggish and, sl and yeah, it's, it's just bad stuff. Alright, so JD is moving the turrets into position. And we finally got recon armor. Uh, I'm going to research fire foam poppers so I can fight fires a little bit more efficiently. All of my mini turrets are in position. Perfect. And they all can power on. Uh, one more thing is I might want... Um, I might want just uh, two paths of power. 
to make sure that there's really not a scenario where um, the, the turrets can't plug in. I really don't think that that's going to happen, but uh, I'm going to go to great lengths to ensure, without a shadow of a doubt, that we don't have that scenario happen to us. While JD is out here, I'm going to break down everything down. The heat wave is now kicking the temperatures up um, to be a little uncomfortable. Uh, so people like Hippie, who Hippie, JD, and Phoenix, uh, who don't have the the uh, crab chitin uh, clothing, are going to find it a little uncomfortable to be outside. I'm also going to queue up another duster for the uh, j make another one out of crab. And that way, uh, oh, really? The lightning directly hit my power cables? That's super cute. Another thing that I haven't yet done is um, update my home zone to include really any of my turrets or anything like that. So I need to do that as well. So that if they break, I repair them and replace them. I already have auto repair on, which is this icon down here in the bottom right. That looks like a little hammer. That's if anything breaks in my colony, I will automatically uh, repair it and replace it. Okay, so that zone will work. All of these turrets now can turn on um, remotely. Boom, they're all on. And the purpose of having the turrets out front, they can there is a possibility that these uranium slug, uh, this these uranium mini turrets will be hit by my own um, main turrets back here. Uh, but the purpose of it is so that enemies fight in this area where my turrets are and don't come too close where I can't fire anymore. That's that's the design. That's the hope. I'm going to take a moment to uh, entirely and completely rip up uh, this old cluster, even though JD is going to have to see a whole lot of dead bodies while doing it, because there's a whole lot of dead bodies out here. Um, but it also has me remember that uh, we have all of those um, ship chunks that I'm sure their components are just sitting here. And they are. So Hippie, would you be so kind as to haul that back and 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 the chem fuel there's actually a lot of resources out on the map that i've irresponsibly ignored so that's something i'm gonna have to uh remedy shortly given that the the season is really heating up and i'm gonna lose my window of opportunity to uh to fix any of that it's gonna be pretty important the heat wave's over so the temperature that it is now out now, which is 131 Fahrenheit or 55 Celsius, that is the actual temperature and not manipulated by the uh, heat wave. Um, which says to me that, uh, yeah, it's getting pretty hot. And pretty soon here, I'm not going to have the ability to uh, send anyone that is not in crab clothing uh, anywhere. I want... Gabe to keep mining, keep mining steel. I guess the closest steel is out here, but also, um, you know what? I might have him mine up a little gold first, just because pretty soon here I will be. Oh, we got the cluster coming in. Whoa, that is a big cluster. Oh boy. create a new avoid zone. Now, interestingly, this cluster looks entirely walled in or very close to it. It has a fog controller. Um, it has a met capsule. So let's analyze it real quick. So it has a high shield that covers this area that stops mortar shells. It's got an assembler for centipedes. Um, the whole thing is on a countdown activator of 19 hours. These two turrets do not share a dead zone, but if I come in through the wall from the east, uh, I'd be able to destroy these turrets without much problem. The only issue is th this auto turret might actually blow up the anima tree, which would cause a mood debuff for a bit. 
If I wanted to come in through the east, I'd need to probably mine through this uh, ancient metal a little bit so I could sneak over. Uh, the fog controller really is of no consequence. All it would do is reduce ranged gunfire. There is no, um, there is no low mech shield. And given that, I could stand here with my shooters and easily fire on this uh, weather controller. It, the weather controller wouldn't be able to stop me because this weather controller is blocking the mini slugger turrets. So from this position here, I could fire on this thing and, and it would not be able to return fire. Well, with all of that said, we now know what the mech cluster for Redfoot's last mech that was assaulting her looks like. This is the last of the friends in the cross, crosshairs. This is the second of the two mech clusters. But I am out of time. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'll catch you next episode. Farewell, everybody.